Welcome back to Indiana Sports Speed Radio on this Friday. It is an, going to be an action packed Friday, and no better action packed dude to have on than our good friend, the Todd Father. Shot Father. Todd Leary. Todd, how are you, brother? I'm great. How are you doing this morning? Uh, just doing wonderfully, uh, enjoying the music and uh, looking for the <laughs> self-producing today. And so uh, that's always fun. All but right. uh, it's like, like I feel like an octopus with eight arms trying to do things I bet. Um, when we're doing that. But so you're out, you're out and about today, man. You couldn't uh, couldn't slow the work schedule down, it looks like. Nope, not today. Today we got stuff to do. So we're we're on the move. Uh, well, that's, I guess it's always better, better than the alternative, but, uh, man, what a busy weekend, uh, tonight's Hoosier hysteria and it's changed. It's morphed from when we back in, uh, your era, was it still midnight madness? Yep. Yep. Uh, it was and midnight madness and it was an actual practice pretty much. Yeah. I mean, now, and it was open though, right? But the and the cool thing about that was the reason it started at midnight, people, for those that don't remember, is because it was officially the first day you could practice. So yep. people started waiting until 1201 and having practice, uh, which was kind of funny. But uh it's now morphed into to kind of a dog and pony show, basically. Uh when you say which, funny, it was funny for the fans. It wasn't so yeah. funny for the players. Because <laughs> yeah. We did that dog and pony show at midnight, but then about 9 a.m. we also had a full practice. And then about 3 p.m. we also had another full practice. And so yeah, it was <laughs> that was October back in 15th, the days when there were there were no rules. Man. Yeah. October 15th was not the fun day a lot of people think it is for us. Yeah. It was a completely different. There were no rules back then. There, there, they did not have the uh, rules on how much you could practice, when you could practice, all of that stuff like they do today. Buddy, it was I, – well, I mean, I'm not complaining or comparing, but it's. I go back to high school and football, and when you had those doubles and started – some teams started having triple, triple, uh, triple practices a day. Uh, instead of two a days, it was three a days, and it's like wow. Um, but hey, all the part of the golden youth, right? Yeah, I mean, hey, back in that time, like if you, you counted just watching film as a practice session, heck, we'd have some days they had five or six practices then. But yeah, it was <laughs> it was definitely a different era. Uh, Indiana tonight bust out a uh, a team with with a lineup that. In, in my mind, uh, of, there's no reason that they are not the favorite to win the Big Ten Conference. Um, although Purdue has been picked to win it, I still just look at that and shake my head thinking, okay, so you're telling me you think this team is just slightly less than it was last year without Zach Eady? Uh, and I'm like, no, I'm not buying that. Trey Kaufman-Wren is not going to fill his shoes he may he will do it in a different manner but you're not getting 30 and 15 from trey kaufman rent uh you're gonna it's gonna take a couple of guys to maybe do that but it's not and it's also going to be in the different in a completely different way i mean he took he was a space eater yeah but but i mean like you're I think Coach Painter and, and probably most coaches are smart enough. They're not going to try to recreate that team. Like th they're going to have a completely different way that they play, and and that's because the way that they play, they had built around Zach Eady. Like it's not like that's how Purdue has played over the years. Now, yeah, they right. do like to go inside a lot, but but they're they're a team that's going to be. I mean, I'm telling you, we talked about the things that were hurting them two years ago when they were playing really well and had Zach Eady just becoming who Zach Eady became. And the, the knock on him at that point was their guards were too young. Well, those guards have two full years of starting experience now. And, and those guys are juniors and you get a, a experienced backcourt that has an all American candidate in it in, in Braden Smith. Like they're going to be good. Like there's just, 
There's no two ways about it. And we don't even know. Heck, they've they've filled that roster. There's two more seven foot three guys on that roster. Now, are they going to be Zach Eady right away? Probably not. But Zach Eady wasn't Zach Eady right away either. Nope. No, and uh, it uh, and they're going to be different. They do have multiple seven. As always, when when does Matt Painter not have a pair of seven footers on his bench? Yeah, well, I mean, they develop them. Why wouldn't you continue that? I mean, I think you're kind of seeing that same scenario play out at UConn right now. And they, you know, they've they've developed players and got them to the NBA quickly. And now a lot of players are signing on board to do the same thing. Yeah, and Dan Hurley has done a an incredible job of course, over the last few years, back-to-back national champions. That hasn't been done in a long, long time and a rare error. Going for a three-peat now, something that Duke was not able to manage. That hasn't been done since the uh, run by UCLA a long, long time ago. Um, and his recruiting is 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 bearing that fruit. He just uh, got the commitment of Eric Ryb. Um Waiting for Braylon Mullins to make a decision, and every all that everyone is here, excuse me, is hearing is that, oh, I, I, UConn, he's going to UConn. I'm like, well, we'll we'll see. Uh, and everyone keeps asking, even on here, what's what's going on, guys? It it's, I I don't have this, or no one really has this, uh, direct line into what that decision is going to be, and I I know that I should. It's not that I don't care. I also know that until this decision or whatever decisions are announced, it doesn't really matter. And I'm always cool with waiting. I don't have to know a week ahead. I don't have to know a month ahead. When it comes out, it's not nothing. It's not going to change anything. Um, it's, you're recruiting. Well, I mean, it changes your recruiting, I guess, a little bit. But with the portal, it just it's more optics than it is reality of, of hurting you, I think. And, and this, you know, this one and this year, I should say, it probably magnifies that a little bit more than normal because yeah, the reasons why, you know, these guys that have committed recently are important is because they're from the state of Indiana. And, and to me, that's why it becomes a bigger deal that, you know, the, the Eric Reeb, Reeby, however you say it guy, like, does that shock anyone that he didn't end up coming in? So that doesn't, it doesn't have the same feeling, but when you've got guys right here in your backyard and they're choosing, you know, other programs outside of the state that they think can develop them better. That's when you've got an issue to, to work on. And, you know, the, the only way to fix that's to win and, and you go out and start winning and you get those recruits. And, and that's just, that's the reality of the way that it is. But right now, you're right. UConn is, is the one sitting back bearing the fruits of, of winning those two national championships, and, and it's paying off pretty good for them. And I will say that uh, this Mike Woodson and his staff, uh, they, have, they were slow to get the, the Indiana recruit train going. And as a matter of fact, I don't know that the train is really going. Uh, to be honest with you, Trent Sisley is probably the only name that I can think of that they've really recruited and landed from within the state. The top player um, missed out on some others. And again, that's all that's all covered up by the, the transfer portal. But it does make you wonder why they don't feel that they can be uh raised up to the level they want to be at home. And so that's, that is a, a big question if that turns out to be the case. And I, I think there, there should be inner perspective, but there won't be. Yeah. And you know what, like a lot of it comes down to the recruiting style and the coaching style of coach Woodson and, and what he, you know, what he looks for and what he believes in. And, you know, a lot of times I, the transfer portal is just, it just makes everything different. Now, as long as it stays the wild, wild west, the way that it is, you can basically go get anybody from anywhere. Um, you know, recruiting the, the ones that suffer the most, I've said this from the beginning, the, the people that suffer the most from this new transfer portal situation are the high school kids. And, and it doesn't bother the top 25, really, even the top 50, maybe even 100. But think how many kids there are across the country, you know, trying to earn scholarships and, and 
you know, those guys from the 100 to 300 range in a recruiting rating system, you know, they're the ones that suffer from this a little bit. doesn't mean they won't get scholarships. It just means they have to take a little different route. Yeah, and uh, this is – we were still seeing uh, a lot of recruiting going on. There's offers that have been going out. Uh, I saw there's a, a kid down in Evansville, Wrights, that just got – uh, an offer. He's uh, uh, he's in the 2027 class, but he's a six seven um, small forward. So lots of uh, uh, offers going out. Man, this is and with Indiana football having the success that they're having, this has to be a great time to bring in recruits because that's not something that Indiana and not something that football is going to land a basketball player, but. It's that environment that you bring him into. You're bringing him into this in, incredibly fun environment, especially this weekend when you have Fox here and uh, all, all the things that are going on. It's it's nuts. But uh, Indiana has not had those many of those opportunities, and I, I think that together they will work to help each other recruit players. Well, I yeah, I can tell you this, like the. You're exactly right when you talk about the fun environment. When you bring someone in on a recruiting visit, you know, nowadays you see a lot of them, a lot of pictures with, the, you know, the kids' families, and they're all dressed out in IU gear, and heck, the parents even have uniforms on, and siblings have uniforms on. Like, it's a big event. Like, the whole recruiting, you know, official visit weekend, it's a big deal and a big event, and, and they make it a big show. But, you know, when you get to like go hang out with the players and they take you out and they go, you go hang out and see what they do. When you get to do that in an environment like the football team is creating, um, you know, that it can't do anything but enhance the visit that a kid has when they come in here. And, and so, yeah, from that side of it, Indiana really needs to be piggybacking on the success of the football team right now. And that's just such a fun thing to be able to say, because in, you know, in past years, if there was a weekend just like this and there was Hoosier hysteria going on and a football game, Hoosier hysteria might be more of a draw for the football team than vice versa. But in this case, actually, that's obviously not even close to the case. I saw yesterday was Wednesday. I saw people driving into town in their RVs already parking them over at Memorial Stadium, you know, yesterday. And I've never seen anything like that in my years of Indiana football. That says a lot. I mentioned this week, I said, uh, you're, you're going to see uh, motorhomes and whatnot out there, but I'll be I didn't expect them to come in on Wednesday. Uh, I was thinking They're about them coming I, in. I saw them yesterday. I'm not shocked. This is going to be, and Indiana has sent out a, uh, uh, a notice and said, hey, peeps, you might want to get there a little early this time uh, because it's going to be crazy. Because, and I keep telling people, it's not just the 52,000 people that are going to this game. I don't know how many thousands of people that will be there just tailgating because a lot of people come and just tailgate and not not to attend the game itself. But uh, it's going to be a wild and crazy day, and I'm, I'm here for it, man. It's going to be yeah. fun because you don't get to see that on this campus very much, and I'm going to enjoy the hell out of getting to cover it all. Uh, as a matter of fact, we get to, um, when we're done with the show today, after Fox has their uh, their rehearsal and run-through for their Fox Big Noon kickoff, and so we uh, get to go out there and, and uh, talk to those guys. But that's that's a cool thing, having that in, in town. That's why it's such, everybody would love to see College Game Day come to, to Bloomington, and who wouldn't? But that's going to, I don't see that happening this year because of the home games that Indiana has. Michigan has already been beaten a couple of times. That's not a draw for them, uh, even if Indiana is undefeated at the time, unless it's because Indiana is undefeated and are taking on Michigan. But ESPN does not carry Big Ten games unless they happen to be playing you know, one of their schools at their place. So they're not going to try to promote the Big Ten much. But – Fox is doing what they can. You've got Urban Meyer in town uh, and guys like that. Who And then yesterday, Urban Meyer said that uh, Indiana is one of the best coach teams in the, in the country. But I don't want to get on football just yet. But what a great mix uh, uh, that Indiana is finally able to use. They've never had that before. Yeah, no, they've had, they haven't. And, you know, a big time when you've got Hoosier Hysteria in town, um, you know, usually – especially this time of year. And, and, you know, I'll say it as an old guy, like 
you know, they like to show off the beauty of the campus and, you know, which it is. I, you as a, I, I don't think you even find people that, that don't love Indiana University. They have a hard time rebuting or disputing the fact that the campus is beautiful and, and this time of year, especially when all the leaves are changing. But now you get to add the excitement of football. And, and like I said, I didn't just see one or two RVs coming in yesterday. There's already a field of them out there. And so um, it, it's just a different atmosphere. It's not something – it caught my eye, obviously. It's not something I'm used to seeing. And, and that's just a cool, cool thing for all the programs, not just b- football and basketball. Like, for all of them, they'll all u- be able to piggyback on this and, and use it a little bit for recruiting. Absolutely. And it is just uh, – it's cool to see, finally, after all these years – it, it's amazing that Indiana has, I'll be honest, it's utterly amazing that Indiana has sucked as bad as they have for as long as they have in football. It, there's just no reason when you look at too many other teams that at least have had runs, uh, but it's all about making the right hires. And a lot of times, Nebraska is a perfect example. They had it's very similar. They hired guy after guy that they thought was going to be the man to turn it around. Scott Frost, of course, was the perfect fit. He was Indiana's Cam Cameron. I mean, there is no way that that you look at Cam Cameron and what he brought that that did not, that that was not going to be perfect. It it was a perfect fit. It didn't work. Uh, It's, but now they've got the, uh, the right coach in there, but we'll talk more about that. On the other side, talk some football. The Tides, the Shot Fathers with us. Don't forget myjumpshot.com. Make sure you go there if you are a kid, know a kid, have a kid, have seen a kid that needs to work with his jump shot. A man that could do that. One of the all time best three point shooters in Indiana history, Todd Larry, to the uh, myjumpshot.com.